alcohol, drinking, nightclubbing. Those are all huge parts of the culture that I was brought up in. A place called Newcastle upon Tyne in the northeast of England, which is famous for those things. And in more recent times, famous for one of the most controversial reality TV shows, which promotes alcohol, drinking and nightclubbing. A TV show which promotes going out and making yourself famous from going out and humili humiliating yourself, going out and drinking and worrying about nothing. The show that has no moral values and goes out and teaches you to go out and not worry about anything, drink all your worries away. And in the northeast, it's very famous for nightclubbing and for going out and drinking and partying. And Newcastle is voted one of the best night outs in Europe. Some of the nightclubs are voted some of the best in Europe. When I've been away from that culture, it's got me thinking about why is it so attractive? Why is it that so many people are following this culture? Why is it that so many people are working Monday to Friday and maybe jobs that they don't even like doing and just going out on the weekend and spending all their money? And why is it that they're in this trap where it's this constant cycle of never ever being able to get out of it? I think over 90% of people that are born in Newcastle stay in Newcastle. Why is that? Because constantly you have this culture and this cycle of just making money and then going out and spending it. On payday, you'll see the weekends in Newcastle, the streets are packed full of people spending half their pay packet or even more or however much money just to go out and have this good time because that is what they think is the norm to do and that's the culture that people go and do it. And it's got me thinking, why? Why do people do it? Why are people trapped in this bit? Why are people trapped in not being able to save money and always complaining that they skin all the time but willing to go and spend hundreds of pounds on, on one night just on uh, alcohol and just on drinks to have a few hours of so-called fun? What is the logic behind this? And it made me think, maybe it's because people don't do anything different. Maybe it's because everybody does it. Maybe it's because they don't want to be the person that stands out and they think it's the normal, it's normal to do that. Maybe it's because they don't have anything else to do, they don't know how to best spend their time. And it's all about the, the word culture. The word culture is the strongest voice. And the strongest voice in the northeast of Newcastle and many other places, for example, when you go to university, the strong voices, go out and do that. Go out and drink, go out and, and spend all your money on alcohol. That's the culture, that's the loudest voice. And if we don't change our own culture, and, and if you're a Christian, you believe in Jesus, you'll believe that you should try and create what we call a Jesus culture. And that's where we follow Christ as our ultimate role model and follow the word and be obedient to the word and listen to the word and let the word of God lead our paths, light our paths and lead our way. Where we don't neglect the word and we don't conform to the ways of the world, then we can follow the true role model, the true light of the world, which is Jesus Christ. And if we don't have that strong culture, our Jesus culture, unfortunately we can conform and we're gonna follow the strongest voice. And that's why it's so important to know the word and have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Otherwise, you're just gonna follow the ways of the world. But I wanna tell you, you can't follow a different way of thinking. You can't follow a different mindset. You can't swim against the current. If you, Even if you think you're the only person swimming against the current and the, the culture, I believe you can't swim against it. And it's not with your strength, it can be with supernatural strength. Not your own strength, but his strength. The power of the Holy Spirit leading your life. You can't swim against the current and against the single-minded, the narrow-minded nature of the culture that you've been brought up in. Now let's have a look at nightclubs for example. Nightclubs are a really funny place where 15 to 7 year olds spend a lot of their time trying to sneak in. And once you get to 18, maybe the buzz is killed a little bit and it's easy, you're, you're allowed to go. But in that age, it's, it seems like a big thing to sneak into nightclubs. But I want to think about nightclubs and how awkward nightclubs are. And I've actually wrote a little poem which is in the description below about what I feel about nightclubs. But it's such an empty and dark place where unfortunately so many people are lost. So many people are lost and alone, standing like robots and clones in a place where most of the night they're just stuck on their phone. And it's a place where it can be so awkward. Look at the dance floors and things. Many people just wait on the dance floor and you wait for the DJ to play a song. But for most of the night, many people can wait for their one song to come on or two songs. And the rest of the time, you can just be standing completely lost. And no one really knows how to act on a dance floor. Whether you bust out or twist the light bulbs off your guy, do you just nod your head? Do you just stand there? Or what do you do? It's a bit of an awkward place at times. So it can be quite funny. But what about the nightclubs that don't even have a dance floor? Where it's completely designed just so you walk around so people can see you. And a lot of people can... And get a buzz from how many people they know in a nightclub and who they who they know and who knows them and it can be a big thing of oh I'm well known in this city but it's very empty it's a very empty thing and I believe that nightclubs and things you can go and you can go and feel that you've got this uh, this feeling you can feel that you're being accepted by a city or you're accepted by this place and you know by people but really inside it's a very empty and uh, empty place where you're not actually being fulfilled and what's being glorified to go and have a lustful encounter with someone in a nightclub that you don't even know and then have the, the night, spend the night together and whatever. 
that's being glorified it's being painted to look as cool and it's being painted to look at you can increase your ego by doing those things actually what it's doing is a, one of the most empty things possible because you'll feel more lonely you'll feel more uh, you'll feel more trapped you'll feel more discontent from what you think is you're solving that you'll actually feel more frustrated you'll actually feel less accepted you'll actually feel more lonely by doing those things and unless you've fully been accepted by Jesus Christ you'll never feel accepted fully accepted you may be accepted by the world but you won't be accepted by God but this lust is empty and these feelings are empty and it'll leave you feeling empty inside and I think you should look for things which fulfill you more than just going out and having an encounter with someone in a nightclub or uh, building a relationship with someone over one night and it's a we can do something a little bit different apart from doing that and I believe even at universities as well when you stuck, stuck in situations where you massively put against it and the pressures on you, peer pressures on you to go and do that. You can stand firm and you can be different. I'll never forget going to many places that if you haven't been in this situation, you will become, you will probably be in this situation if you put yourself in it. Or maybe you've been in this situation as well. We sit around in a group of people, maybe at a house party or a university event, and they play this game called I Have Never or I Have Never Ever. And you sit there and this game is basically glorifying how warped and how twisted and how humiliated you've been and they're glorifying all these things to make yourself look better and what you do is you sit around and you you sit around you go around the circle and you basically say how uh, who can who's the the person who has done the worst things and someone who's uh, done these so-called cool things so this game is all about showing how uh, perverse you are and how uh, how much lack of respect you've got for your own body essentially and if uh, what people think is is that your ego is going to improve and your popularity is going to improve by sharing with everyone about these these things that you've done the the the, the bigger things that you've done but in and as a matter of fact what's actually happening is everyone is judging you when you go around the table and after the game or maybe after that you know many people will will probably judge you and, um, and it comes to you and maybe you sit there and I've been in situations where I've sat in this game and because of what I've believed and I believe that I'm waiting to find the right person and not having sex before marriage and trying to say if that is something that I believe God has gifted me this gift and gifted the whole world with the gift of sex and we should use that gift to glorify him and not just go and do it with anyone or build a relationship with someone else but if you sit in that place it can be very very hard and a lot of peer pressure when there's 20 or 30 or even 10 or even two or three people that are all glorifying and saying yeah we've done this and you to stand up and say no I believe that I'm waiting for the right person and waiting to save this gift and give it all to God and give it all to this one person, give all of me to one person so I can become one, one flesh with this one person. And that, that can be such a hard thing to do. But I'm, I, as I've been traveling the world, I've met many people who believe that. And often you can think, well, there's no one that believes that. There's, you, you may be watching this video and thinking, well, it's all right for you. You're a 23-year-old single guy, you know, who's, who's not done that. Fantastic. But there's many people around the world that are doing that. There's many people even in your city that you live in are doing that. Just because everyone else isn't doing it doesn't mean that everyone's doing it. And you can choose to sound firm and you can choose to not go and conform to the ways of the world and start to listen to the word of God and listen to what the Bible says and listen to people who have done that and said, if you do this, you'll get the most out of this gift. This is what I think about sex and from a previous video that I made about sex and why we should keep it for, uh, we should use it as a gift that glorifies God. It's easy to go to a nightclub and easy to go and cheat on your girlfriend or wife or partner. It's become normal to go and do that. And it's almost like no one really cares anymore. And we've lost the right view on the way sex is, the way that sex is a gift. We're given that two people should come together and enjoy love together. It's not sex should be something that we should go and get intoxicated by alcohol and then go and do it and think that's going to be the same as what it is before. I look at the way that we've looked at sex and it's the best gift that we've been given. And it's imagine if you're given a gift as a kid and you like say, right, you've got to plug this gift into the, uh, into the wall with electricity. And you say, if, if you do this, you can get the best out of this gift. But if we don't plug it in the wall, you're never going to get the most out of the, to the toy. And you might be able to play with it, but it's not going to be the same effect as what would have plugged in the electricity. And I feel like if you do it, if you look at sex and, the, and do it the right way, and you wait for the right person, and you make and have make love instead of making uh, and having sex all the time, and casually giving yourself away and having no respect for your body, and casually giving yourself to anyone, you're not uh, going to find happiness, and you're going to find a lot. You're going to find a lot of problems, and it's going to be very empty when you do that. And I feel like we should look at sex and look at like, trying to get the most out of the gift and using the gift the right way. Plug it in the electricity and save it for one person. Because sex is the, 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 the coming together of two people becoming one flesh and spiritually being uh, people coming together. Not just physically, but spiritually as well. And that's why there's so many problems. For those of us who have fell into temptation, there is an answer for that. It says in the Bible that those who confess with their mouth and believe in the heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, then they will be saved.
And the Bible says, if we confess our sins, then God is faithful and he'll forgive us. And as far as from the east is for the west, God will forgive our sins if we choose to say a prayer and confess our sins and repent and change our mind and turn in the opposite direction and live a new life. And when you play those games and you put yourself in those wrong environments, it says in the Bible, don't be yoked with unbelievers. And it says that what fellowship can light and darkness have together. And that's a challenging thing because we should be around unbelievers so we can share the gospel and the true light of the world with them and offer them salvation that Jesus gives the gift of eternal life through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and dying for our sins. But we shouldn't be yoked with those people. And unfortunately, bad company corrupts good character. And if we're around bad people, unfortunately, our morals and we think we compromise and we become more and more worldly and we end up following the ways of the world. And it can be very, very sneaky. So you look at a cliff and this is where you fail and uh, you often fall. If we don't flee from temptation and a little bit compromise, 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 before we know it, we're going to be banned off the cliff. So that means we shouldn't put ourselves in the, the bad environment. And unfortunately, when we have things like alcohol and we go to nightclubs and we hang around with uh, people who are... Uh, uh, conforming to the ways of God and conforming to the drinking culture. Unfortunately, we become like the world and we become like those people. And unfortunately, we can often lose our morals and perspective and often we can fall victim to those things. And that's why it's so important that when you have alcohol and you lose, uh, you control your self-control. And that's why alcohol does it. It uh, makes you relax and it gives you, it takes away your boundaries. It's so important to control that. And for me, alcohol is one of the most overrated drugs. And if you can go out and have a good time in a place or a gathering with your friends or a party or whatever, you can have a good time without alcohol. If you're so confident with who you are and your identity or true identity, if you know who you are, you can go out and you can have, you don't need alcohol to have a good time. You can go out and enjoy yourself just from who you are and who you naturally are. And I believe that if you, you understand who you truly are and understand your true identity, that you're a child of God and you understand all the things that the word of God says you are, then you can go and stand up against the culture and you can go and stand up and you can swim against the, the current and against the crowd. Because remember, if you follow the wide path, it leads to destruction. If you follow all these other people and we get lost like sheep and we go astray, unfortunately we're just going round and round in a circle following the blind leading the blind. And unfortunately that wide path where everyone else is going, that leads to destruction. But it's the narrow path that's hard to find, but that's the path that leads to true everlasting life. And we need to follow that narrow path. And that means going against what the world says and against the cultures that you come up with. And I believe we can overcome the strongholds of your cultures when you know who you are and when you live your life led by the Holy Spirit. But when it comes to alcohol, I want to share my story a little bit. From a young age, I used to play high performance sport, which meant that on the weekends and everyone would go out, I would avoid that because I used to be trailing up and down the, the country every weekend. So I avoided that. And that meant I didn't really come into contact with alcohol until I was 18, 19. And from the, that age, it's a very, very slippery slope. And from those two or three years, it's very easy to be trapped. And unfortunately, you can lose a lot of your values and go a long way away from God and his will if you let that uh, those things creep into your life. And I want to share a little bit about that. And we can avoid that. You can say no and say no to temptation, but it's all about surrounding yourself with the right people and making sure you don't compromise on your morals and your beliefs. Now, I want to look at what the Bible says about alcohol. And I want to share with you a particular verse, which is a big verse in my life. And it's Ephesians 5, verse 18. And the Bible says, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery, but instead be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, what debauchery is, it's a, it's a, an excess of alcohol, it's an excess of, it's an excess of sex. And what that is, is uh, it's frowned upon in the Bible. It says that those people who do those things and live uh, by debauchery, then they will not inherit the kingdom of God. And it says that when you get drunk on wine, it leads to those things. So instead it says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, the word says that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, if we fill ourselves with alcohol and get drunk on alcohol, then unfortunately, it's that what's going to be leading our life instead of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you look at a car, a really expensive car, like um, uh, let's pick a Porsche, for example. If that's a diesel Porsche and you fill it with diesel, great. That's what we want to be filled with. That's like us filling our body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit, filling it with the Holy Spirit. But if we fill it with petrol, instead, alcohol, the car's not going to work. And that's a good analogy for us. We should be filled with the Holy Spirit and not with alcohol. Now, when it says that, it says don't get drunk on alcohol. Maybe it doesn't say don't drink alcohol. And there may be a difference between you being able to control the, the amount of alcohol that you have and in my experience, I would say that um, you should control how much you have. And it clearly says in the Bible not to get drunk on alcohol. Maybe that doesn't say don't drink alcohol, but it's all about boundaries and not having an excess of it, which leads to you falling into temptation and falling into sin and the trap there. So that verse has been a big verse for me, but we should be filled with the Holy Spirit and not be filled with intoxication and filled with alcohol. And another verse I want to share is Proverbs 23, verse 20 to 21. And it says this, Do not join those who drink too much wine or gorge themselves on meat. For drunkards and glutens become poor, and drowsiness clothes them in rags. 
So it says we shouldn't join those who drink too much wine and gorge on too much wine, indulge on too much wine. Instead, as I said before, we should try and flee from that and don't be yoked with unbelievers. And that's a really two really important verses that have changed my life and have made me understand a little bit more about alcohol. So I hope those verses encourage you. And the verses that I've been speaking in this, maybe I didn't quote them, but a lot of the things that I said are from the Word and from the Bible. And you should go away and hopefully research those things and then we can live our life led by the Holy Spirit and led by the Word of God and not by the world. So I want to just raise those issues about alcohol, about nightclubbing, and about uh, the drinking culture. And no matter where you are and where you're from, you can swim against that if you create a Jesus culture. And if you know who you really are, and you know what the Word of God says, you can go into what God has in store for you. You can go into God's will. You don't have to conform to the patterns of the world. You can be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So remember, maybe watch that poem about nightclubbing and maybe see if that relates to you. That was something that really spoke to me about the way I used to live and when I went to nightclubs in between the age of 18 to 21. Hopefully that helped you guys and we'll see you soon.